In this video, we will be taking a look at the electromagnetic spectrum, what it is, what it consists of, and a basic overview of the electromagnetic spectrum. In definition, the electromagnetic spectrum basically describes all the wavelengths of light, as well as the entire range of light that exists, whether we can see it or it is entirely invisible to the naked eye. Now, in an electromagnetic spectrum, there are two things within it charged particles and electromagnetic waves. Electromagnetic waves are basically an electric field and a magnetic field compiled together to, fo to form an electromagnetic field, thus creating a wave. In this diagram, we can see the seven regions of the electromagnetic spectrum and the order in which they are represented. They all share similar attributes, as in they all travel faster than the speed of light, are measured in hertz, and are transverse waves. The order in which they are shown are radio rays, microwaves, infrared waves, visible light, ultraviolet rays, x-rays and gamma rays. The order in which they are situated basically has to do with the higher frequency to the lowest frequency, starting off with radio waves being the lowest frequency traveling all the way up to gamma rays, having the highest frequency. Radio waves. Radio waves are a type of electromagnetic radiation with wavelengths in the electromagnetic spectrum, longer than infrared light. Radio waves have a frequency from 300 gigahertz to as low as 3 kilohertz that correspond from 1 mm to 100 km. The uses for radio waves. Radio waves have many uses in today's society as they are used to produce television, radio programs, networks, communication, broadcasting and many more. The different uses for radio waves differentiate as some needs a direct transmit into a receiver and some can send and receive from different receivers. Energy. Astronomers that study these portions of the ele electromagnetic spectrum usually refer to these photons by their energies. Measured in electron volts, EV, ultraviolet and radio wave radiation falls in the range of a few electron volts to about a hundred electron volts. Gamma rays then are th all the photons with the energies that are greater than a hundred kilo electron volts. Dangers. Large doses of radio waves that are believed to cause cancer, leukemia and other disorders may occur as some people claim that there are very low frequency fields from overhead power cables that somehow affect them and, and their homes as they sleep. Some studies claim that the radio emissions from power lines, microwaves and radio communications contribute to the growth of tumours and are linked to increase in headaches and other brain disorders. Microwaves Microwaves have wavelengths above 1 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz. Uses for microwaves. Since microwaves have lower frequencies and longer wavelengths than the light does, this enables some of their frequencies to be absorbed by more water, water molecules, which can help with cooking and warming of food. The energy of microwaves. Microwaves have approximately 5 milliwatts of micro radiation per square centimeter. Dangers of microwaves. Since microwaves are used to cook and heat our food, they can have negative effects on our food. For an example, they destroy and reduce the vitamins in your food. And also, from time to time, they do leak radiation into our food that over long periods of time can cause cancer.
infrared. The electromagnetic spectrum is categorized by wavelength. The shorter the wavelength, the more dangerous. The longer the wavelength, the less dangerous. Infrared has a longer wavelength, which ranges from 800 nanometers to 1 millimeter. Although it's not visible, humans can sense it as heat. Infrared is useful when trying to probe areas that are surrounded by clouds because infrared can pass through. It was discovered in the 1800s by Sir Frederick William Herschel. Infrared has many uses. Some examples of these uses are in TV remotes, infrared lamps, thermal imaging and astron astronomy. There aren't many dangers in infrared, but when containing a very high level, there can be some dangers such as eye problems and pain to the skin. The region of the electromagnetic spectrum which is visible to the human eye is known as visible light. In order for our eyes to see light, the waves have to oscillate between 400 and 790 terahertz. The wavelengths are between 390 to 750 nanometers, which is one billionth of a meter, depending on the color. The wavelengths are roughly the size of a virus. The energy given off by the waves have to do with temperature. Different colors have different temperatures as well as wavelengths. The benefit of visible light is that it allows us to see color and differentiate color as well as temperature to a certain degree. The dangers of visible light are attributed with the other regions of the electromagnetic spectrum since all regions are connected via visible light in some way or another. Hence ultraviolet being violet on the color spectrum as well as infrared being associated with red on the color spectrum. The color spectrum is basically the range of colors which the human eye can see. Ultraviolet light or UV rays is an electromagnetic radiation with a wavelength from 400 nanometers to 100 nanometers, which is 750 terahertz to 30 petahertz, shorter than that of visible light but no longer than X-rays. Ultraviolet light though isn't only a source of heat, it has such a strong chemical radiation that it causes things to glow or fluoresce. Some of the benefits is that it can be used in turning beds as, as well as for made black lights. Ultraviolet light is also responsible for the formation of bone strengthening vitamin D in most land vertebrates including humans. The UV spectrum also has its disadvantages and dangers, such as overexposure to UV rays can be associated with overexposure to the sun since the sun emits UV rays. Some of these side effects are suntan, freckling, sunburn and other familiar effects along with a higher risk of skin cancer. X-rays have a wavelength of 0.01 nanometers to 10 nanometers. Their frequency ranges from 30 petahertz to 30 exahertz and have energies from 100 electron volts to 100 kilo electron volts. They are longer than gamma rays and are closely linked, but shorter than ultraviolet rays. Some of the benefits of X-rays are that they are used in the medical field to see inside of a patient's body and thus allows doctors to check for any broken bones or damaged tissue. X-rays can also be used for security, such as airport security when luggage is being scanned. The danger of x-rays is that it can cause damage in cells and produce cancers in the body. Overexposure to x-rays can prove harmful since x-rays are a type of radiation overall.
information on gamma rays. Gamma rays could or should be called X-rays and vice versa. This is because they are both completely identical. The reason for the different names is based on the ori origin and not the type of radiation. The wavelength range of a gamma ray is less than 10 picometers, which is less than the diameter of an atom. This though is not classified as the definition, rather the rule of thumb regarding gamma rays. Gamma rays are used in medicine to treat internal organs. X-rays are produced by firing electrons at a metal target, and gamma rays are emitted by the nucleus of a radioactive atom. Gamma rays are used to kill cancer cells and to sterilize medical equipment. Gamma rays usually produce energy of about 100 kilo electron volts, or KEV for short. Gamma rays have the smallest wavelength, but have the highest energy. Gamma rays cause damage to your body at a cellular level and penetrate the skin. Low levels of gamma rays cause a stochastic health risk, which if analyzed by a doctor, it would become clear that there is a probability to be diagnosed with cancer and also possible genetic damage. If gamma rays are received in high quantities, there is a very high risk or even a certainty of acute tissue damage.